Warning! This video contains spoilers for the entire Tokyo Mew Mew franchise, the OG manga, the OG anime, and the Tokyo Mew Mew reboot anime. Viewer discretion is advised. Please feel free to turn off this video if you want to avoid spoilers. Thank you! Hey everyone, it's me, Oblivion, and today I'm going to be talking about lettuce from Tokyo Mew Mew and how I feel that Tokyo Mew Mew Nu treated her character poorly. Just in case anyone watching isn't fully aware, Tokyo Mew Mew is a 7 volume manga created by Mia Ikumi, which had a 52 episode anime back in 2002. In 2022, a reboot anime premiered that was intended to be a closer adaptation of the original manga source material. Since the original anime took some liberties with the story and had a lot of filler type episodes to help bring more attention to other characters. I'm not opposed to shorter anime or anime getting reboots meant to be more accurate to the original manga source material, as in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and Fruits Baskets 2019 are two of my favorite anime of all time, but I did have a few concerns about how the characters besides the main character Ichigo would be portrayed, since most of the character moments that made us fall in love with the other characters were only in the 2002 anime. As I said a second ago, the manga is only 7 volumes and focuses mostly on our main character. I was worried about how the other Mew Mews would be portrayed, especially after it was revealed that Mint would already be a Mew Mew at the start of the reboot, and that Ichigo's age changed to the older from the manga in the original anime. Although this was a change that was met with a lot of positive reception, I thought I would mention it given just how much we knew it would be different before the anime even premiered, when it was supposed to be more manga accurate. At first, the 2022 anime seemed to be going really great. It did take some liberties and some events happened in different orders, and the pacing was a little weird in some places, but overall, the anime seemed to be a dream come true for Tokyo Mew Mew fans. When it came to the episode where Team Cafe Mew Mew all go on the cruise, there was a little moment that was kept in from the manga that was left out of the original anime. Lettuce, who was feeling down about herself, was given a magic juice from Shirogane, and is then able to get over her fears and inability to swim to save a child and find some new aqua. At the end of the event, it's revealed all Shirogane did was just give her some orange juice. This is a pleasant surprise to me. Lettuce finding the Mew Aqua is a huge moment for the narrative, but it's also a huge moment for her character. Lettuce as a character is very shy, a bit of a pushover, and severely lacks self-confidence. She's the most relatable character in the series for me, and I feel that nearly everyone can relate to her. This moment shows that Lettuce has the courage and selflessness to help people without hurting herself, and is able to be acknowledged for her own accomplishments, and that she can do that by growing confidence from a supportive group of people around her. I also always thought this was a good way to show that Shirogane does care about the girls, and he knows them well enough to help each girl as they need. Since the original anime didn't have this moment and the manga overall focused on Ichigo, we mostly saw him interact with Ichigo and saw how he teased her a lot and their bickering banter in an almost tsundere type way, where they got on each other's nerves but have a mutual respect and care for one another. Even with the additional episodes and original plots in the 2002 anime, we rarely saw these kinds of moments. So new including this felt like a justice to both Lettuce and Shirogane. So imagine my surprise when early into season 2 we get a preview for a totally new, original to Tokyo Mew Mew new, not in the manga at all, Lettuce focused episode. The preview showed Lettuce and Shirogane going on... a date? Lettuce and Shirogane were always a potential ship in the manga in the 2002 anime, and is decently popular in the fandom community. So an episode that seemed to almost straight up confirm the ship and give a huge hint seemed like it was going to be taking a new direction for the two, especially with other little hints added in the first few episodes of New. I'm not trying to make this video about shipping by the way, but as someone who likes the Lettuce and Shirogane pairing, I was really excited about this. A ship I like having a cute date episode? Who wouldn't be excited? Well, I was excited, all the way until reaching the episode, and after watching it, I was left with my mouth gaping open, and not in a good way. The episode starts off with Lettuce walking down the street and blushing after she hears a woman call out to a Uro, which happens to be Shirogane's first name. She blushes due to her feelings for him, and we get a flashback to him telling her that she needs to be more confident in herself after the episode on the cruise. We learn that the outing advertised as a date isn't the two going on a date exactly, but it's a mission to try and find Mew Aqua at a marine life museum. 
Lettuce volunteers to go along with Shirogane since it's close to the ocean and Lettuce is the water themed Miu Miu. Kish comes and ruins everything like he does, and Lettuce falls out of a window and wakes up on a beach of some sort? There's a volcano in the back? Where is she? Anyways, she meets this woman named Madeline, and she insists on taking Lettuce to her home to heal her wound. So the two end up walking through the village to help Lettuce figure out what happened and how she can get home. The entire village looks way different than what Lettuce knows in Tokyo, but she doesn't really question it at all besides it just kind of looking old-timey, even though the people all suspiciously look exactly like Kishin Pai and Tart. Madeline has issues with her boyfriend who suspiciously looks like Shirogane to the point Lettuce mistakes him for Shirogane. We learn his name is Shifan, not that it matters, and he's asking Madeline to leave with him, but Madeline says she can't leave. Once they arrive at Madeline's home, let us ask her what they were arguing about, and Madeline reveals that the land they live on is probably going to sink into the ocean and kill everyone who doesn't leave. So the ones who leave in capitalized letters, like he who shall not be named, are going into space and trying to find a new home. Turns out Madeline is staying on an island that is going to sink and Siobhan is leaving and they love each other or whatever so they don't want to be apart but conflicting ideas blah 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 this episode infuriates me anyways lettuce and madeline talk more about this and lettuce gets passionate and tells her she should tell Siobhan her feelings mirroring lettuce's crush on shirogane and how she hasn't told him yet and lettuce needs to grow her confidence after this conversation, Lettuce finds that Madeline owns the earrings that are said to belong to the Little Mermaid, and yet she still doesn't even think that she time-traveled to the past somehow from this! So, Madeline decides to go to the docks to tell not Shirogane that she loves him, and Lettuce helps. They kiss, and Lettuce is then floating in space-time or something? And Madeline appears saying, Yeah, thanks for helping me, but actually no that it happened, lol. I actually died before I could tell him. Turns out, the earrings Madeline owned actually do not even carry Mew Aqua, but they carried her regrets of never telling Blondie her feelings, and they just sank to the bottom of the ocean, which were then found and put in the museum, and due to Lettuce's Mew Mew powers and her connection to the ocean, she was able to hear Madeline's sorrows and help her rest in peace by doing something that never happened or mattered because they were all already dead? Do you guys see why this episode frustrates me now? <laughs> Madeline then tells Lettuce that if she has feelings for someone, to not be like her and tell that person how she feels so she won't regret never telling them. Lettuce is then transported back to the museum hours later, having both the bandage Madeline used to wrap her wound from before, from when Kish, you know, rocked her ass, and also the earrings. After her experience with Madeline, Lettuce takes the moment she has alone with Shirogane to confess her feelings to him, to which he responds with neither a yes or a no, but a, I can't return your feelings because I need to work on the Mew project right now. Which, you know, fair. Shirogane's regret to dragging the girls into this mess without their consent is done really well and new in my opinion, and I do think this is a realistic approach to their situation. He wants to keep them focused on their mission, and he doesn't want a romantic relationship to get in the way of keeping the girls safe, so he has them in equal playing fields by having platonic and business-like relationships with all of them. Plus, if something did happen to any of the girls if he was dating them, he might get, get too caught up in his feelings and do something rash. He even actually apologizes to Lettuce, saying he's sorry for doing that to her and not being able to give her a straight response. Lettuce assures Shirogane that it's alright, and she understands, and she'll stay strong despite the rejection. Afterwards, she can't hold her brave face anymore, and she cries in front of Zakuro. This episode was a mess, to put it simply. With only 12 episodes to do the remaining half of the manga, and it already being filled with original episodes that don't affect the overall plot, I'm not that satisfied with this being included. While I do like how it shows that Lettuce needs to gain confidence and the episode gives that to her, there's other ways for her to do that, I think, in ways that have real meaning. The events of the episode frustrate me because everything was for nothing in the end. Madeline and Chiffon were already dead and Lettuce didn't change anything. And how does Lettuce having a daydream make Madeline's soul rest in peace if Madeline still didn't get to tell Chiffon anything? You could say this is all to just give Lettuce confidence to confess to Shirogane, and it does do that, but it's weird how the episode sets up that Lettuce and Shirogane are mutually romantically interested in each other, just for him to not say that in the end. 
Again, I don't blame Shirogane for this response, and I think it's a smart one for the situation, but it doesn't go anywhere. Lenis just ends up being hurt, and I guess the lesson for her is to take a chance regardless if you fail so you don't regret doing nothing. Like the saying that you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, but to parallel the couples by saying they both don't work out in the end? What's the point of the Dane advertisement of the episode then? Why go to all that trouble? Why go to the effort of giving this couple of Madeline and Chiffon a second chance when the second chance means nothing and it doesn't do anything for Shirogane and Lettuce? Also, Lettuce never tells anyone what she sees for the rest of the series. The only time she mentions it is when Deep Blue is revealed and she says that what the aliens are saying about the planet belonging to them before humans is true, but she doesn't elaborate at all and no one questions what she means by that. Also, did I ever mention that Lettuce gets a split-second vision of the generic JRPG Final Fantasy X looking village back in the Cruise episode? All that foreshadowing for next to nothing? Not one time she mentioned this to anyone else, especially to Shirogane or Akasaka who might have an idea what she's talking about. Oh my god, I'm trying not so hard to explode because of this episode, but what? What is this? What is this? The one thing I do like about this episode, though, is how it does show character growth in Lettuce in the following episodes. Two episodes later, there's an alien attack at Tokyo Bay, where this geyser thing is spreading poisonous acid like water and it keeps growing, and if it isn't stopped, Tokyo's in big trouble. The other Mamus can't get inside the water spewing out and can't stop the machine from causing all the destruction. But Lettuce is able to sense the Mew Aqua that's inside and says that she can swim through the water to get to the Mew Aqua and stop the pollution. Both Shirogane and Akasaka are against this, saying it's too dangerous and there's no telling what can happen to her. However, Lettuce holds her ground and firmly asks them to let her go, assuring them that she'll be alright. Shirogane agrees, gets angry at Masha for not following her, and Lettuce is able to use Ribbon Aqua Drops to save the day. This episode continued off of the dynamic established two episodes ago, implying Shirogane may have feelings for Lettuce, but just isn't acting on them. His eyes are noticeably soft when the bubbles rain down from the sky, and with how he was so protective of her despite her assuring him that she can do it, along with Lettuce having faith in herself and growing more brave to the Shirogane and Madeline's influence, it further adds to the idea of them being a potential relationship. But at the end of the series, when the world is saved and the girls don't need to be Mew Mews anymore, Shirogane and Lettuce never talk further about this. Even if they didn't end up together, the fact that there's no closure once the Mew project ends is just a slap in the face to all the buildup. What was the point of not only adapting scenes in the manga that never made it to the original anime, but creating entire new scenes meant to be material for a ship only to leave nothing resolved? It's not satisfying. And it just makes Shirogane look like an asshole for never giving Lettuce a definitive answer, on top of making Lettuce go through an experience that is ultimately mostly useless. Sure, in real life stuff like this happens all the time, but why go to the effort of making a parallel universe of characters to mirror what Shirogane and Lettuce can be if it just doesn't get any kind of resolution? It's sloppy writing and doesn't do either character justice. What's worse is this isn't even all of how Lettuce is done dirty in New. In the final few episodes of New, Ichigo is facing off against Deep Blue in the series climax. This final fight, if you can call it that, was very lackluster, and this fight rubbed me the wrong way not only for the lack of action, but because it felt like Ichigo was almost out of character. After this episode premiered, I discussed it with some people in the Tokyo Mimi Discord server that I'm in, and everyone seemed to agree that not only was this fight not satisfying for Deep Blue or Ichigo's characters, which is a whole other discussion in and of itself, but Ichigo's statements about finding a solution together was Lettuce's thing. Lettuce was the one who always talked about working together with the aliens to not fight, but still find a way to save the planet and live peacefully. That's the entire appeal of the Gurple ship! Which is even more of a stinger because Lettuce and Pi have no moments in the entire series until the final two or three episodes, and Lettuce's stance of wanting to talk these out and finding a compromise seems less unique because Ichigo says the exact same thing to Deep Blue. And the way it's framed makes it seem like Ichigo came to the solution on her own, and not inspired by Lettuce's growth as a character at all, which Ichigo does notice back in the episode with the poisonous water. It just comes off as the writers reusing motivations and reasonings or making it seem like the obvious solution, which, like, obviously to the aliens, no it isn't, considering humans are the reason the aliens had to leave their own planet. 
Nothing about it seems convincing and doesn't even matter that Lettuce visit Madeline because she was like this in the OG. Nothing about this is new to her character. It's who she is. So her having to time travel to come to this conclusion to not ever mention it is just, frankly, it's really stupid. Why go to all the trouble just to give two characters the same solution to different battles? It's a disservice to both Lettuce and Ichigo, but considering how all the other Mimis consistently get snubbed to give Ichigo the limelight, it's a greater sin against Lettuce in my opinion. While I do think that Tokyo Mew Mew New succeeds at the end with Lettuce befriending Pai, Gerbil for the win by the way, and her becoming an employee at the museum and giving tour guides as a way to show her growing confidence, I feel like overall her arc was very lacking and all over the place. I don't know if I would go so far to say her character was butchered, but I do think this is the least compelling version of Lettuce's character, which is a huge shame because season one of New set her up so well with showing her isolation and how much Ichigo and the other girls mean to her. A few good moments can only carry a story arc so much, and I think overall in New, Lettuce's character is sinking as opposed to swimming. I love all versions of Tokyo Mew Mew, and all three versions have good and bad parts about them, but season two of New really dampened my spirits when it came to Lettuce. She is a very kind and courageous girl whose growth is aspirational and meant a lot to a younger version of myself. This video is not meant to say New is bad or that Lettuce is the worst character in New, but just to say how what I loved about her seemed to not be present or done justly in this version. This is a video made out of love and passion for a series and for a character. I just wish she was portrayed better in this adaptation, but at the end of the day, New still has great lettuce moments, and I still have all the other fantastic moments from the 2002 anime and the manga to revel in, and I will never stop loving this character. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I wanted to make this video for a while now, and just needed to figure out how I wanted to word all the thoughts I've had on this for the last six months or so. Maybe longer than six months? It's been a long time. <laughs> Tokyo Mew Mew is a series that means a lot to me, and even if I love it dearly, I still wanted to critique it in a meaningful way besides this reboot is different, so it sucks, or this anime trope is kinda sus. <laughs> so uh, this is what we ended up with. Please feel free to let me know how you felt about Lettuce's portrayal in Tokyo Mew Mew New. I would love to hear everyone's opinions. And also feel free to let me know if you want any other Tokyo Mew Mew videos from me in the future. If you want to talk more Tokyo Mew Mew, I'll leave a link to the server I mentioned in this video in the description. Be safe, stay hydrated, and take care of yourselves. See you guys next time!